So we're back on the 855 Cummins, the big cam, and we're working on getting the fuel pump put back in. As I said in the last video, it's not the right compressor, and you know, here's yet another thing we have to fix now or change because this wasn't right. Our this is a discharge. This air line goes to our air dryer, and it's too short, and there's no way for me to move it, maneuver it, and get enough length and it not rub on stuff. So we have to take it off and replace it. But we're just going to keep moving along, uh, hooking things up. We've got the governor hooked up. We've got the tack drive for for the uh, tack off the fuel pump. And we're starting to hook stuff up to the fuel pump. And the uh, when I took this apart, a couple lines wouldn't come loose. And I didn't get too excited about it because they're just little steel lines. And we can remake this. Not really a big deal. Not supposed to be like that. And that one's just a 90. As long as I can get the length correct, the measurements, it should be okay. So uh, we're going to take these over to the workbench. And you can see this one looks like it may have been leaking as well. See how wet it is? may have been a source of a leak. We'll get it taken apart, get these ends off, get them cleaned up, and bend us up some line, and then flare the ends of it. So this is quarter-inch tubing, and it has an epoxy coating on it, which is great, except for, you know, clamp it in my tool to flare it like that it kind of kind of gets boogered up a little bit but it's better not have the coating so we're going to go ahead and put these on so we don't forget you see how this goes in the two dies here and once it's clamped in there that's when it does it does the damage to the coating so we want it just flush with the top right here here this just takes that tubing and starts to do this line that up down in there make sure this is tight this is hydraulic so you close this valve and then we're going to pump it and this piston comes down Now we'll put the second piece in. Center it up. So this probably took, I don't know, maybe five minutes to do both ends and this this would have been 30 bucks so now we have to take the old one and see how how the 90 is there we got to bend it here so we got our 90 put in so we have a bender okay we'll start here this is a much tighter bend than my bend will make so I have to start a little bit earlier to get the same result. I'm lining this up right in here. So if this lines up into here and it lays in here, then if I go this way, my bend should be close. So on this end, I needed to reuse a factory fitting because it's a female end. This one's a male, otherwise I would have replaced it. So now we just have to go bend these two at the right location so it fits.
crazy about this fuel line, but it's not really going to be a safety issue. It's just old, so we're going to go ahead and put it back on. I'd like to replace this line, but we're not going to. like I do and I just realized that this oil pan when they shipped it it got damaged I've already painted it they won't take it back so I've had to take a hammer and pound out the corners to try and get this flange straight so that's always a good combination when I'm fighting the whole purpose of this started with oil leaks we're trying to fix and uh, get a oil pan that was ship crappy so frustrating. Using high tack again on the back side of that and then uh, putting all the bolts in so it'll line up well and let it glue and dry to that pan so when I go to stuff it up in there I don't have to worry about it moving. <laughs> we'll probably have to go down below and torque this because I can't get to the bolts right very well here. Anyways I got the oil pump in and I'm torquing the bolts down. It's 40 foot pounds and I'm changing over the fittings. One of the fittings broke. Well, it didn't break. It got destroyed trying to take it out. So I'll have to get a new fitting. And then the compu check. This is their Cummins way of checking pressures in different locations. They have them. You see it here on the, on the pump. Two different locations. And this one there. And I don't know if there's any more on this, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and put this back on, even though, you know, if we were going to test the pressure, we'd probably just tie into that because I don't have that. But anyways, uh, i got to get underneath there to get that torque so I can't get to it well. And then, after that's on, we're going to go ahead and put uh, the power steering pump in place. So now the oil pump's in, the copy check fitting's in, and then the... This pump has an adapter. It goes from an O-ring, flat O-ring face to a pipe thread. So I got that in. The power steering pump is now in. I've just got done putting all the lines in. And I had to take that bracket for the throttle spring off the other one. It's a pretty stiff spring, but it is what it is. That's what was on it. So next, what I'm going to do is get ready to put the oil pan on. I still don't have the parts for the top end. I ordered push tubes, and they're still not here. So I'm going to try and get the bottom end all wrapped up. Um, next, we'll be putting the oil pan in place, getting it all torqued down. Um, and I'm still waiting on a, a uh, serpentine pulley here. It's got some play in it, and those are all new belts. I'm not going to ruin a... Uh, $30 belt for a $35 pulley. So that'll get here and I'm going to go get my fitting here in a minute and have my airline made. We had to cobble this up a little bit because this was different as well, but I think it's going to be okay. I'm not happy with it, but I'm just going to have to live with it. And I was able to bend this coolant line. Um, I stuck it in a vise and put a socket on the end of it and bent it little by little trying to tweak it and yeah i think it's going to be okay if not i'll have a line made i won't know till we get cooling in it um but next i want to get the oil pan in 
We got the oil pan in, and it's all torqued down. All the 7 16 bolts down the sides and across the front get torqued to 50 foot pounds. And then the little 5 16 ones back here, there's four across the back right in there. Those get torqued to 20. Now we got the oil pump tube in from the oil pan to the bottom of the oil pump, and that gets torqued into, uh, geez, I think that was 35 pounds, foot pounds, both ends. I'll, I'll look. If it's wrong, I'll, I'll leave it in the description, but we're coming along, so now I got my parts, so I'm going to go ahead and get up here to the fuel pump, and we're going to change out that button real quick. still waiting on some of my push tubes so I can't put the top end back together completely but I'm gonna start getting the rocker boxes up and getting them in place next so I mentioned this in a previous video which maybe some of you guys have seen it, some of you haven't this engine did have an, an engine brake on it at one time it does not now but some of the pieces are still left here these uh, these stems here that push on the exhaust valves um, if you're not familiar with how this engine brake works on this, engine oil comes up through here and there's a rocker shaft and the rocker shaft uh, supplies oil to the jake. The jake uses oil pressure inside it and then there's a valve, a 12 volt uh, solenoid valve that when you apply power to it, it opens a passage and applies oil pressure onto a piston and that piston can push down Oops. That piston can push down on this pin. This pin moves independent. So when you want exhaust, when you want an engine brake, flip the switch, that oil that's feeding the rocker shaft goes into there. It's sitting and waiting. You flip the switch, it opens a passage, sends oil pressure to here. And then what is normally at rest, it's up here flush. Then when you put oil pressure to it, it pushes on it. And that holds the valve open. That's your, that's your engine brake. But we don't have engine brake on this anymore. So I've ordered up six of the original style um, adjusters. We're going to take advantage of the time we have while we're waiting on parts so we can be as far along as we can be. I didn't want to put the oil pan on until I was done up here for fear of dropping something. But I got tired of waiting for parts. And I just want to be productive. I hope it doesn't bite me in the butt on the bark side. Well, don't don't let me fiddle with it because I'll drop something for sure. I said that I'm like I better just grab them things and bring them over here <laughs> instead of drop them on. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's them. So what I'm doing is I've got the dial indicator set up and I'm screwing this down just until it makes contact, but I don't want it to lift. So I'm gonna watch the dial here. I don't know if you can see this. I have to watch that dial. I can't really get it. It's too far. And as soon as I see it start to move, I have to stop because I just want it to touch. I don't want it to raise. There it goes, right there. So I'll just back it off till it stops. And right, right there. Now we'll tighten this up. Okay. So now that makes that bridge level with both of these valve stems. And that's what we're after. So I'll set this up for this one. And it'll be easier to see the dial in. It... Okay, wait. It moved back, actually. All right, hold on. Once it starts moving. Now. Tell me when it stops. It stopped. Now it's moving. Right there. All right, so we have to... I want it to be just where it comes in contact. There's nothing, nothing. Right 
there. You see how it does that? Mm -hmm. Just so we're gonna hold it right here. <clears throat> Tighten up the jam nut. Okay. Now we'll move on to the next one, which is right here. So we're gonna put new O-ring seals on this shaft. And they go in the ends of the rocker shaft right here. You gotta make sure the inside bore is cleaned up good. I'm gonna run these in with a half inch Allen. I'll have to torque this down. This isn't the best Allen socket. But it was my dad, so I thought I'd use it. We've already cleaned up the plugs, got all the paint off it, and got the threads cleaned up. It's one of these in each end. So, this is sealing the rocker shaft to the housing, which I believe is where a large amount of our oil leak was coming from because all around these end caps was it really clean like it's had a really big oil leak and it's been cleaning it up and uh, I need, need you to stand on that okay like right here hang on, hang on. Hang on. okay yeah right there here you can't hurt this Hang on. Okay, I wasn't ready. Okay. On your side. Sorry. <laughs> Clumsy. Yeah. There. Right here. Okay. All right. So now that those are sealed up, we can uh, put this one up on the on the truck, which I think I'll just go ahead and seal both of them now. So we're changing over from this rocker box here that was broken um, in the corner over there where the cover bolted through was busted and wouldn't tighten up. Probably another source of our leaks, so um, we're pushing it back into here, pulled the rod out, and this oiling hole, or set screw actually, goes through here it holds it in place and you can see here it is offset to one side so you have to make sure you get this in here correctly and we checked out all the the bushings to make sure they're not worn out or needing replaced keeping them in the right order Alright, so we need to get the shaft in the right location for the set screw. You can see right down in here is a place for a set screw right in the shaft. And we're almost there. I just need to turn it this way. So I'm using these to my advantage, the plugs. Because if I tighten one, it turns it one way. If I tighten the other one, it turns the other way. It's going to line up my holes. Just watch down in here. Oh, I can't see it for that. Well, it's almost there. I think it just needs to go in. It's lined up perfect. Almost. This is our set screw. It goes down in. And this is the new rocker box. That that old one was cracked. 
All right, it's in. So what we had to do was take, put the plugs on either side and turn it, tighten it one way or the other to get that thing just right. And now we're, now we're in. Make sure we're in about the same amount as these ones. Yeah, I don't want to strip out that aluminum. We'll call that good. Okay, now we can finish cleaning this up and get ready to put on. All right, we'll start with the back. Get the gasket in place. Those things, pain in the butt. Big pain in the butt. All right, I've got them all lined up. Next, we're going to put the bolts in. There's a washer that goes in here because we've got a steel bolt going through a aluminum housing. If you just put that on there, it would just destroy it. So um, we'll get them washers in. We'll get this one torqued down. I, have to, I want to do it with the rockers all loose. Well, we got two rocker boxes in. All the push tubes are underneath the the rocker's now lined up. We haven't adjusted anything. I, I have to torque all the boxes down before we do anything else, but <clears throat> I'm, you see I'm supposed to be three push tubes right here. I'm still missing one. I ordered these three weeks ago. The company told me they had them all in stock, and uh, I called them two weeks ago and said, hey, I'm, I'm short one. Do you show that you shorted me one? One get lost in shipping? He goes, nope, nope, looks like they shorted you one. You still owe you one. We didn't have them all. So it's supposed to have been coming here last week and it's still not here. So um, I can't, I can put that box in, that rocker box. I don't want to because it makes it more difficult to get these push tubes in the last one. So we're just gonna wait till we get the push tube. We'll put the last rocker box on and then we'll run the overhead on everything. And we should be getting close to starting. I know it's loud, my torpedo heater is going. Got my last push tube finally. So now we can install this last rocker box. So the last rocker box is sitting in place and all the push tubes are underneath these. Well, almost this one's kind of falling out. But uh, I just want to make mention that uh, there are several different bolt lengths and there'll be four of them that are longer. Four of these would be for an engine lift bracket if you had it. We don't, it's gone. Someone's removed it and you know it isn't there, but you can see how minor it really is. It's a quarter inch and I've measured it and it looks like we're okay, it's not a big deal. We don't need to change the bolts out. So we're gonna go ahead and get all these bolts in and we're gonna do the torque sequence. All right, torque spec is 60. I like to start in the middle. I'm working my way out. Okay. Now I'll continue on with the rest of them. socket for this so I'm using a crow's foot and extension. So all we've done is taken and run in the adjusters just until we take up the slop. We don't want any pressure on these, on anything. We just want it just to take it up. So what we're going to do on the overhead was we have to know where the cam is because a cam, as you know, the crank turns twice as many times as a cam. So A on our accessory drive down here could be... Um, 
on one rotation of the crank or the other. So in order to know which one it is, we have to find out which, which push tubes are up, which would be easy to find because if you notice, they'll have a lot more adjusters sticking up, meaning that it would be pushing, the cam would be pushing up right now and applying pressure to the injector to inject. So if you look here, a lot of our injectors are up, and if you look at the, the valves, you can see these ones here, like this is probably one that's supposed to be open right now. So, and just like right here, you can see this. Again, two insides are always intake, the two outsides are exhaust, and the center is the injector. So you can see here, this, this intake valve is meant to be open. So if we're on the A mark, that's not the one that we want to adjust. We'll know that that's not supposed to be adjusted. So if you see on here, on A, we should either be able to adjust injector three, or if, it's, if the, crank, the cam, the crank is 180 out of that, we should be able to do number four. So number three or number four should have the push tube down in order to adjust it. So you can see here, see how much adjustment there is here and how little there is here. That tells us that the cam lobe is pushing up on that push tube right now, meaning it should be pushing down on that injector. So that means that we are on this part, the second part of this. So we'd have to start here and adjust <clears throat> injector number four and then the valves on number two. So number two, if we look here, you can see how, how recessed these are. Doesn't that just figure? You can see how recessed these are, meaning that these valves right here are closed because there's no pressure pushing up on these, so we had to take up a lot of slop right here. So we're gonna start on that second A right here, number four injector and number two valves. So if you don't have a manual for yours, you can find your lash adjustment right here. Valve lash cold. It's hard to read in here, but this is the intake is 11 thousandths and the exhaust is 23 thousandths. Most times, um, these things get out of adjustment and they get wide. So you'll notice a performance issue where it feels like you don't have as much power, maybe it's a little bit noisier, and what's happening is that's wearing between the rocker and the top of the bridge that goes from one valve to the other. So what happened, well, wear everywhere. Could be in the cam, could be in the push tube, could be in the rocker ball, in the shaft. But anyways, what happens is that gap between the rocker where it pushes on the bridge gets wider. And when it gets wider, then the valve doesn't open as much, so your performance suffers. So you'll hear a lot of guys, your fuel mileage is down, your power's down, it's time to do an overhead. Um, overhead's not difficult to do, but, um, you know, it's, it just takes a little bit of time. All right, so these, these feeler gauges are obviously designed to come apart, and they've got a 90 on, which is very helpful. So we need 11 and 23. So here's 11 for intake, and 23 for exhaust. Probably best to clean these up too. So the reason that the 23 is for the exhaust is because as the obviously exhaust valve is going to heat up, everything here is going to heat up and it's going to expand. So um, you need a little bit more clearance because of that the intake isn't going to heat up and expand as far as the exhaust. We decided we're going to adjust the valves on number two. That's these two here, which we believe. <clears throat> Leave these the ones. So we're going to take this being the exhaust. We'll take our 23 and put it right in here. Back this off enough. We get our 23 in there. Some guys set them different than others. Um, I like it to just drag across there. <coughs> Once I'm happy with that. Don't do like whoever this guy was. It used a regular wrench and rounded off all the, the nuts. I use an offset. Make sure I'm 
happy with how that's set right there. And tighten this up. Let's see if I run that down by hand. <clears throat> okay, number 23 drags coming through there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. As I say that, and I'm going to do it again. Okay. Now, I would rather this be um, a little bit more of a drag than, than not. Because I would rather uh, we get full opening of the, the valve than not. Okay, now we're on to the intake, which is 11 thousandths. Again, same thing. Get this close. That's where I like it right there. Put this on, hold this. I need to get a bigger screwdriver, bigger blade. See how that doesn't fit the, the slot well? You really want that to fit well so you have less variation. So let's get a bigger screwdriver. <clears throat> After I've done those two, I want to mark it so I don't forget they're already been done. Okay, now we're going to go on to the injector. So now on this injector, it's a a plunger style injector and they have oil in them and fuel so in order to adjust this correctly we need to evacuate the fuel and the oil so we're basically gonna we're gonna basically activate or make the injector um, spray out any fuel or push out any fuel that's in it <clears throat> so we're gonna bottom the injector out <coughs> we're not gonna go crazy you can just feel it bottom out that's enough that pushes all the oil out of the chamber and the fuel out of the two separate chambers. Now we're gonna back it off, and you'll know it. We're gonna take this, you'll feel it just got zero lash. <clears throat> we'll take it to where there's no tension on it. You can feel there's no tension. We're gonna take up the lash just gently, so now there's, there's no slop in that at all. The next thing we're gonna do is go different. Cummins wants you to add six foot-pounds of torque to this. To me, I think that doing a torque method is less accurate um, than the way that I was shown by all the old guys I know. Um, so it's, it's very difficult to hold six foot-pounds of torque and then tighten up a jam nut, okay? So the method that I've been taught is to go two flats of this adjuster. So if you look, our flat is right here. Okay, and we make a mark right here. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to where we're at, not this point, but this point. So what we're effectively doing is adding 120 degrees, just like so. And then by doing that, <clears throat> We're getting a, what I think, is a far more consistent torque value uh, preload on the injector than doing the six pounds because when you figure out the each, each half of this and how far it goes, it's extremely close and, you know, the thread pitch is very close. It's just very inconsistent, at least for me, to try and hold six pounds right there on, on a, you'd be using a needle. Um, a beam style torque wrench so you'd really have to be conscientious and when you go to turn this it changes I just prefer this I think it works better uh, maybe not but like I said all the old guys I know this is how they do it and I like it so then you just tighten that up okay so that's our first in the sequence so now what we have to do is rotate right here the accessory drive you can see I'm on a here can you see that <clears throat> I marked the back of it so we can really, see it. Yeah, I think it's focused. Okay, so you see A here. We're going to turn it clockwise and go to B. We don't want to go past B and come back. If we go past B, we need to go around again and again until we come back and land on it. Okay, so we're going to pull it around. You see the indicator mark right here? That's what we're going for. We're 
right there. Okay, we should be on B. So now you can see if we're on B, we should be able to adjust injector number one and the valves on number four. So injector number one, <clears throat> yeah, you can see how far down that is there. So you should be able to adjust injector number four. And again, that's all we're gonna do is bottom it out. You'll feel when it bottoms out because it, it just comes to a stop. And you, <clears throat> I'm not putting a lot of force on this because I don't want to damage anything. That's it right there. So then we back it off till there's no lash. Again, the reason the bottom it out is to empty out, evacuate all the oil in the plunger <clears throat> and in the fuel out of the injector itself so we get a good, accurate, a more accurate adjustment. Back it off till there's lash, and then we'll take it until there's there's no lash. We're touching. Okay, now we're touching. So we'll set that one is right here. So it's that point. So we want to go to not that one, but that one. So all we have to do is run this. Right to there. We got our points. Offset wrench on. Wrench to hold this. Right there. There we go. Okay, now <clears throat> we should go on to. Now you can see the chart here. Injectors on number one, we just did. Now we're on valves on number four. <clears throat> so you see these are our valves for number four. You see how they're they're down quite a bit. So we should be ready to adjust these. <clears throat> so now we're gonna do <clears throat> do the intake. I got the exhaust right here. I'll do the intake first because camera's in the way. Okay, this is our intake. Back this off just to where we can get this in there. And then just start to drag it. I'm happy right there. Check it again. You guys will watch. Okay, we'll hold that. Check it. Make sure we're good. I'm happy with that. And we'll tighten her on in. Okay, now we can do the exhaust valve. Again, the outside's the exhaust. <clears throat> Oh, wait. Sorry, I'm trying to get comfortable. There's not much to stand on here. Just want to make sure we mark that so we know we've done it. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to back this off till we have a little lash. It's exhaust, so we need 23. 23. Right there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Make sure it's tight. Okay. <clears throat> now we'll mark that one it's been done okay now since we've done that process now we're going to move to C if we've done it right it should be getting increasingly harder because we're building compression <clears throat> we'll 
you'll have to go around this twice because again the, the crank turns twice to the cams once we should have inject uh, injector on number five it should be right here and it is Evacuate that injector. Just gonna make sure that you're not just bottoming out on that that nut that's holding it tight. That you're actually bottomed out in the injector, and we are. So now, again, back it out. You can tell when the spring tension's gone. There it is. And we'll just take it right back till it's in. Again. Okay, so we go from that flat to that flat. Okay. Now we can go to A again, and then we would be on. Then we would be on injector three and valve five. second A, so that's going to be injector 3, valves 5, so injector 3, right here, or not down <clears throat> make our point here here there Inject number three and valves in number five. So these are the valves we're going to adjust now. <clears throat> this is the exhaust. Looks 
exhaust is number 23. <clears throat> Happy with that right there. <clears throat> Lot number three, double check. <clears throat> I'll grab eleven. finish that now we have to go to B in the second the second time we're on B okay, B now on B we should be able to do Injector six and valves on three. So here's valves on three. Which it's easy to check yourself because that we're correct because if we were on the wrong stroke, we wouldn't have all this slop in here. Okay, so this again, <clears throat> this is our exhaust Got this one, this nut so chewed up. I saw that. I'm using the wrong wrench. Happy with that. I wonder what happened. 23 thousandths. That's the exhaust. This is the intake. Okay, now we're on intake, which is 11, thinner. See that one got, no, it's okay. I was gonna say it got a little too tight, but it didn't. <clears throat> okay, so now we can do the injector on number six is what it said. It's kind of important too, I didn't talk about this earlier, but the injector push tube is different from the valve push tubes. The intake and exhaust push tubes are the same as each other, but the uh, injector is different.
zero lash right there. So this is the importance of marking what you've done and what you haven't because when I was on C the first go around and we did injector number five, I was supposed to do valves on number one and I did not. You can see these didn't get marked and get, didn't get adjusted. So I'll have to do the next C that I'm doing is supposed to be injector number two, which has not been done yet. and valves on number six. So I'm gonna have to go back around to the other C and finish this that I forgot. And again, that's one of the nice things about marking it so you know what you've done and what you haven't.
all since I missed the number one in uh, valves. You can see we have marks on everything except for that. So I need to come back to E, nope, C. So I have to go around a full rotation to get back to C. that moves you want to make sure that you're actually bottom the ball is inside that push tube because if it's on the outside not sitting proper it'd be really messed up So after all that, we went through the rotation two more times, ABC, ABC, and we rechecked with the process, the way the procedure is supposed to be, recheck each valve for each position and each injector. When we checked it and we're, we're happy with it, I go through and I make sure all the jam nuts on the bridges and the rocker adjusters 
are all tight all the way through the process. And once I'm happy with that, I come down and don't forget to take the socket off the accessory drive. That's a bad day. So now we're ready to put oil in this thing. I've got the batteries hooked up now and I've put a bunch of oil in it. I don't know if I got all the oil in it yet. I think I think it takes 11 gallons, including the filters. I think I got 10 in it. But I want to crank it over, see what it does. All right, go ahead. We don't have a turbo hooked up or nothing, but. Crank it again. Bleed the air out of it. We got a low pressure. What do you got? I think it's that line that I made and flared. Oh. I'm thinking it's not tight enough. That's a stinker. It's right down in there. It's that one I replaced. My, either I'm not tight enough or my flare's not good enough. I think I got it. it just, I just need to tighten it up a little more. Looks like it's okay now. Yeah, that, that line just need tightened up a little bit more is all. It's a reference line for the oil pump. So it uh, is self-regulating. You see that line down in there. It goes in the back of it. And uh, that flare just, that fitting just wasn't too tight. I'm always a little apprehensive going into brass. So I was probably a little bit light on the turning, lighter than I need to be. But it's starting to build air pressure. You can hear it. We don't have a turbo hooked up because I don't have the intake on, but I guess we're ready to, we're going to run through and recheck the overhead since it's been running for a few minutes and uh, make sure everything's okay. Since it's been started now, we're going to go ahead and run through the overhead one more time just to make sure everything is in good adjustment. And if it is, then uh, we'll put the rocker covers on. So I made a mistake. The, this plate was supposed to go on top of that rocker box and uh, I completely forgot that it went on before the bolts so I had to take it back apart not really a big deal it just took a second and this plate goes in and bolts to the fan hub bracket the mount alright I'm going to start it up again he's uh checking for leaks and we're gonna watch the oil pressure you ready yep, go ahead.
Well, I'm very pleased with how it sounds. It it runs so much better. The throttle is so much snappier. Um, overall, it's just a quieter engine. I think uh, I think that I'm going to attribute that to the overhead was probably out of adjustment to begin with. That was one of the things, and the fact that we added some fuel. Now we're not done with this injection pump yet. Injection pump, fuel pump is what it is. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a fuel gauge on this and we'll run it up hunt out from under the hood to the windshield And what we need to do is we need to get this thing um, at wide open thr throttle Wide open throttle pulling a load and see what kind of fuel pressure we're actually getting to the injectors We need to make sure we got adequate fuel pressure going to it So we still have to do that and then I'm going to run the coolant in and then I'm going to get underneath it and look for any more leaks anything so far so good we got a power steering leak it's right up here at this gasket i'm going to see if i can locate another seal for that if we can great if not well we just gonna have to run a little bit low i guess at least so i can locate something o-ring make a seal something but anyways i'm pleased this punch it runs good sounds good 42 pounds of oil pressure um that's with the coolant at 100 and about 140 degrees that's, that's as high as we got it today but we'll run it in and see what it is thanks for watching guys hope you all enjoyed Catch you on the next one.